Welcome back. We remain your election command center. Coming up next, we're live in the United States of America to check the mood and test the pulse, the atmosphere ahead of tomorrow's crucial United States of America election as part of our build-up for that coverage. We remain your election command center. Well, over 344 million eligible voters are expected to cast their ballot. And in fact, as we speak, over 76.4 million of the voters in the United States have already cast their ballots and running up their campaigns, both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump have been talking. First, let's listen to Kamala Harris and what she had to say. Take a look. Good afternoon. It is so good to be with everyone. Thank you. Are we ready to do this? We're ready to get out the vote? We're ready to win? All right. Okay. So first, let me thank Glenn. I was, I was telling him when we were just hanging out backstage. So when I, my first office that I ran for was district attorney. And um, the Carpenters were the first union to endorse me. <laughs> and, and, I, and I... Let's hear from Donald Trump as well. The Honestly, they're worse than the politicians. They're worse than the politicians. And they're being caught. That's why their approval ratings are so low. They're being caught. It was a great... I think it was a great thing I did for the country because I don't think people... Before I came along, nobody talked this way. Well. But they're fake. And we need a fair press. And we don't need a ruthless press. We need a fair press. And sometimes that will be ruthless. Oh, so these are the two front runners into the elections. And guess what? There's a lot of talk about what is happening with the immigration positions of these two candidates and then the matter of jobs. You hear Donald Trump talk about fake statistics about jobs. Place across, don't you see that? And Dela Michelle uh, and uh, Sunny Abdul Rahman are our international affairs correspondents joining us in two different states in the United States right now. Dela, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Uh, you've been interacting with some of the persons of color, voters of color in the state where you are. What's been the conversation so far? So, Afra, thank you so much for having me this evening. Um, here in Maryland, where I'm currently at, the mood is actually one of anxiety. You know, people are really anxious, especially among the African-American demographics. People are concerned whether which candidate is going to come into pass, specifically because of some of the issues that has been raised, which you rightfully touched on. Immigration, for instance, if you are in the African-American community, or if you're an immigrant from Africa, you are really concerned about that because over and over again, we've heard projections of what um, Trump tends to do. Should he be, uh, you know, in position as the president, specifically Project 2025, some of the things that he's going to revoke, especially when it comes to you being able to get access to your working visa, or even sometimes, sometimes as somebody who's here to study, some of the concerns that they have raised concerning even student visas, after, um, you know, completion of school here in the U.S., you've been able to get the opportunity to work. Also, there's been concerns about massive deportation, which Trump has said, even though the conversation began with illegal immigrants, it looks like it's all been summed up into one. Right. So when you hear immigrants, whether legal or illegal, people are concerned because now they cannot even tell if this deportation is going to affect them or not. So especially for legal residents, which we normally refer to as green card holders here in the U.S., especially in Maryland, it's it's a worrying situation for them. They are really anxious. I think I, I spoke to a couple of them who first were Republicans. You know, they were Republicans uh, when Trump was in, but now they are calling themselves black Republicans for Harris. And it's because of this major issue amongst them. And on, on the bit about the, the jobs as well, we see that being a topical issue here in Ghana, and I was telling Dennis earlier, it's playing out strongly in the United States as well, is it not? 
It is. I mean, at this point, everybody wants stable opportunities. If you will recall, after COVID-19, um, a lot of tech companies here in the U.S. had layoffs. So from 2021 into 2022, 2023, major tech companies had a number of layoffs. Now, this lay layoff was, was cutting across, you know, whether you were white or black, it did affect them. But again, for the African-Americans, how it is difficult or challenging to get jobs sometimes, of course, due to the issues of race, has been a concern. Because it's not enough for you to have what we call the weapon authorization or the green card, but also things of race comes to play. So when you're filling out an application, they're asking you, are you black? Are you African-American? And these are things of concerns. So people have felt that in fact, their race has also limited them and the opportunities that they will get. Not, not, not say, saying that doesn't mean that people are not getting opportunities. They are getting opportunities just that they have been arguing that it's been limited. So they are looking for someone who is going to come in to listen to their concerns and make sure that it's going to be an, a, a leveled playground for everybody. If you're going in to get a job, of course, you know, these are the things that they look forward to. These are the things that matters to them. If you're going to the grocery store, for instance, Alfred, and you're buying egg for 99 cents, you're buying um, bread for 3.99. These are things that are relatively expensive to people because they do recall previously they could get these eggs for much cheaper prices or even full for cheaper prices. So they expected some level of stability where even when you save up and to pay your bills and to pay everything they have to pay, all is not lost, you know, at the end of it. At least you can still have something to save. Look forward to getting your own home, which Kamala actually mentioned in her submission, saying that, listen, I know it is a struggle for first home owners. So what I'm going to do as part of my economic recovery program is when I'm going to set aside an, enough amount of money, like 25000 for first home owners, so it can be easily accessible for people who want to get homes, you know, here in the U.S. And we talk about bread and egg, and it's uh, one of the same issues here. I mean, you're buying bread for 25 cities, between 25 and 40 cities. The last, in fact, the last time you were in Ghana, it was something lesser than that, is it not? You're seeing that play out as well in the United States. And maybe in 30 seconds, those who have voted already, over 76.4 million, we understand. What has been the conversation as to where the direction of their votes went? So, um, Alfred, I spoke to one gentleman from Guyana who mentioned to me, he said, Dilla, I went out and I voted for Kamala Harris. The reason being that I'm expecting to see some level of decency in, in the U.S. If you look at the two candidates that have been, you know, proposed, you can tell from their rallies, from, from their campaigns, the way um, each person has communicated, the speech that has come up from each candidate's uh, mouth and which resonates well with people. His concern is that he's seen a particular speech that hasn't been too friendly when it comes to the Republican candidate, that is Donald Trump. It hasn't been too friendly, it hasn't been decent in his words. And he's hoping that at least the decent Americans will come together and pick up something that is going to bring back normalcy to the state. So they are hoping that their votes are going to matter this time around. Not just mm -hmm. that, as you saw right. in the video earlier today, there are a lot of campaigns going on. Um, Kamala is in Pennsylvania. They are doing the door-to-door -door campaign. They are letting people go out to vote, even though, especially those who did not participate in the early voting earlier. Della, appreciate you on this. And we are with you every step of the way for this coverage. So we'll connect with you tomorrow as well. Thank you so much for this update. Appreciate you. Uh, uh, Della Michelle, thank, uh, thank you so much. It's an international affairs correspondent together with uh, Abdul Sani. They're going to be with us as we cover the elections in the United States. And we should be of concern as well because whatever happens there plays out in many ways and its impact here in Ghana.